Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Tech Update with Tech ESMS in which I used to cover all the latest tech, maybe news, updates, development boards, sensors or contests which were announced in the span of the month and this is the September 2023 edition so I got a lot of interesting and new stuff for you guys so let's quickly get started so first of all i got you cover a couple of projects and well, these are not exactly the diy projects but this is some interesting content uploaded by some of the youtubers in the month of september and i thought like you should be aware about these things happening in the market so first of all this is from paul's project and he made the tiniest ever esp32 development board it's a development board by the way and as you can see these are uh, his fingertips and as you can see this is the complete development board it's working successfully it's programmable as well it got a micro usb connector on the back as you can see this is a micro usb connector these are the push buttons and one rgb led and he also tried uploading an led blink example code which kind of works successfully find as well let me show you so as you can see the led is blinking on board so this is definitely the smallest esp based development board but because of the small size there are a lot of drawbacks in it and first major drawback is even it is based on esp32 chipset it can't be used as a wi-fi or a Bluetooth device it's just because at this small size he was unable to add the antenna on board and without antenna we can't use the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth of course and second drawback is in this small size even if it's a development board we can have only one single GPIO pin exposed so we can't use it in a project where multiple GPIOs are required okay one single GPIO pin and that's it so yeah those are the drawbacks but it is really interesting to see a maker making such a tiny device that to a development board. So a big thumbs up to this video. Let's just give it a like. And yeah, that's the first update. Now second is coming from a YouTuber called as Jeff. And the major achievement of this YouTuber is he got a chance to work directly with Mr. Beast in one of his videos. Well, you all must be knowing about Mr. Beast and his videos. So in one of the video, he gathered 100 people from age one to age 100. They all were put in a separate room and they were having some of the contest and due to the, with the elimination process, only one person in the end wins and they are giving a couple of thousands of dollars. So for those rooms, uh, Mr. Beast wanted a tech to be installed in it, which involves, uh, you know, kind of a button case let me just show you so these are the rooms and each room were having the rgb led strip and each room are having a button okay this is a button case so there are r g and b colored buttons so they can press the button to put their vote and also based upon the vote the color of the room will get changed that was kind of a simple project but why i have put this video here in this tech update well this is kind of a vlog based content in which he covered all his journey of making that particular project. And during that journey, he faced a lot of problems. And I want to show you guys like when you go for doing such big projects, even if the project is very simple, you will face a lot of technical issues. And well, some of those issues will be so much hidden that you will barely able to recognize it. And this video got one of that issue, which I was not able to recognize, but he kind of did that. And let me show you what was that issue. So each and every room, as I said, was made of acrylic sheet. And this blue is kind of a film attached to the transparent acrylic sheet. Okay. So what was happening is even after installing the project, one by one, the projects were getting damaged and Jeff was not able to recognize it but at this moment he recognized it when he tried to peel off this uh, uh, no film of acrylic sheet and he came to know that there is a static electric charge on that acrylic sheet and just imagine there are hundreds of rooms peeled off simultaneously there is so much static electric charge in that area and those static electricity were damaging all the components one by one so that was the issue he faced so i kind of like this vlog based content i'll definitely insist you to watch it out to know how the things are getting debugged or how things work in practical life so yeah that is another content and now moving ahead we have the content from our channel only which is techie sms in which i have covered a vokui simulation platform so this is an amazing platform which i recently came through using this you will be able to make your own iot projects without having any hardware with you right okay so this is a platform and as you can see there are four development boards supported arduino uno esp32 stm32 and pi pico and you can not just make such led blink based project but you can make some advanced iot projects as well so in this video i shown a couple of examples as well so uh i have shown how to control the led using the blink iot platform okay so i can control that led over internet using blink platform 
here you can see i provided the sid name and the password as well moving ahead i also uploaded a code in micropython a script in micropython using which i was able to send the data over mqtt protocol to adafruit io server so i was sending the temperature humidity sensors data which is dht22 to and uh, uh, here is the adafruit uh, dashboard in which i was getting all the data so you can make the actual working iot projects without having any hardware and that's the voqui simulation tool a must uh, to have tool for a learner and an educator as well who is kind of educating in the field of iot it's completely free of course so yeah that's the video let's give a like to this video as well and yeah those were a couple of content uploaded by youtubers in the span of the one which i liked it and now moving ahead there's an update coming from a uh, circuit digest which is about the world energy challenge 2023 well this is the contest which is announced way before a month i guess and this contest is for all the makers like us and you can win some amazing prize money well i already covered a detailed video on my channel that guides you about how to take part in it what are the prizes to be won how you can win it and how you can submit your project everything is covered in this video whose link is in the description definitely but why i covered again in september 2023 well it's just because they have provided one more update in the contest which is kind of you know a better or easier process to take part in it so earlier there was a condition to purchase and use at least two components from analog devices and you can get it from dg key and currently they have updated the process and now you can use the components not only from analog devices but also from microchip technologies stm microelectronics raspberry pi and espressive systems as well but you need to get it from dg key only but the process is a more easier now so now you can use the esp based chipsets the raspberry pi computer in your project and that project will be eligible for this contest so that's a major update provided by the circuit digest team and if you haven't you submitted your project yet if you haven't enrolled for this contest well i insist you to go ahead enroll in this contest right now because i think there is the last date okay the 38th september so when you're watching this video it's the last date okay so make sure you update uh, sorry submit your project as soon as possible so yeah that was the update from the contest part and now i have a couple of updates regarding the new development boards microcontroller microprocessors or the sensors which were announced or released in the span of the month and there are a lot of those new devices but i'll let you know about all those devices after thanking my sponsor this video is sponsored this by video NTM, is sponsored which is a PC by designer NTM, based software company which is a PC designer based software NTM company not just another, another PC designing software designing software designing software designing it's a world class 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 design
Till now, we were not having any dedicated on off or power button in Raspberry Pi, but now you can power it, up, power it up, like boot up your device or shut it down using a dedicated power button. So that's a new thing updated here. There is a lot more new thing. Let me show you. So we have now two dedicated slots for camera and display. So earlier we were having only one single slot. So either we can attach the display or either we can attach a camera. Okay. But now you can attach maybe two cameras, maybe one camera, one display, or maybe two displays using this slots. And again, this time also we are having the support of dual 4k up to 60 FPS HDMI support, but this time it also supports the HDR, which is amazing. Okay. Then next we have the dedicated chip called as RP1, the Raspberry Pi silicon on board. So what it will do is it will handle all the peripherals, maybe USB, maybe GPI, all the external peripherals. And it's kind of a bridge between the microprocessor and the peripherals, which will help us to do all the things faster. Okay. Faster USB data transfer than uh, faster communication through the uh, uh, IO ports. Okay, so that is a dedicated Raspberry Pi silicon on board and yeah, everything computer but optimized. Okay, so there is one more uh, change. So they have introduced a new accessory as well called as Raspberry Pi active cooler, which is a combination of a heat sink plus a fan. Okay, so this will help us to cool down the Raspberry Pi. We move faster. We have a new power supply. Now this will provide the five amperes of current. We have a new case introduced as well, which has a dedicated fan on it. It's kind of a different looking case with a proper ventilation. Then we have one more update. If I show you the image, then here this time they have introduced a dedicated slot for connecting the fan. So earlier we need to connect the fan to this GPIOs like VCC and ground, and then will the fan will turn on. But this time we have a dedicated slot, which is a great uh, move by the way. So we can attach the fan here. Then we also have the RTC on board and this is the battery connector for that RTC. So those are some of the visual changes. And if you want to see some of the benchmarks, like how fast it is compared to the Raspberry Pi 4. Well, there are a couple of YouTubers who got the early access of Raspberry Pi, like, Raspberry Pi, like Jeff, like the network, uh, network chunk. So you can watch out their videos to know everything about this board. Unfortunately, we didn't get the early access of Raspberry Pi. I hate you Raspberry Pi. <laughs> but anyways, so yeah, that was the major update of September 2023, but we do have more. So moving ahead, uh, we have a Kickstarter campaign called as Multi Nav Pro Plus. Now this is the best ever GPS model, which I have ever seen. Okay, so it, well, it is the best in all the ways as compared to the traditional GPS. So if I show you the video, then this is the video. First of all, it's the GNSS module, not only GPS. Okay, so it will support all other, you know, protocols as well. Then we have on board very small chip antenna as compared to the bulky antenna which we were having previously dimension is again very very less it's a very small size gps module it has higher accuracy as compared to the previous ones then it has a very low power consumption as well. Its size is pretty impressive. So if I see, uh, show you the size comparison then. So yeah, here is the Raspberry Pi 4. Here's the Arduino Uno and here is the tiny little GPS model. It's kind of a combination of two ESP01 model, I guess, or maybe smaller than that. So that's the GPS model. It supports the uh, I2C communication protocol. It supports the UR, UART, I guess, let me just see. So yeah, you are an I2C interface support is there. So you can use it with all the microcontrollers that have this kind of communication support. Almost all the microcontrollers will have that. So that's the GPS module right now in Kickstarter. You can get it. You can back this project and I am particularly excited to test it out. So I'll, I'll be touching with this team and if let's see if we can get the testing unit and it will be a great tool to check out. So if you want to see that video, well, make sure to subscribe to the channel right now. Next update is again a new product. It's on crowd supply. It is not at all available right now. It's coming soon still. It's called as ESP Offline Flasher, a great tool for all of you who are into the IoT product based industry or electronics product based industry. So what happens is once the code, the firmware get finalized, we need to upload that firmware, the same firmware in different, different boards. And we are using the computers to upload that sketches. Okay. But now using this tool, you won't need a computer. You won't need any external software. Just click the button on the board and it will upload the code in a rest of other boards. So let me show you. So this is kind of a device in which it has built in EMMC uh, internal storage, kind of a flash storage. You can say a 4 GB in which you can you know, flash the or put the firmware file. Then you can also put the configuration file here in this chip. And once you connect the external ESP32 with this connector, 
press a button, the firmware will be uploaded on that chip. Again, remove it, add another one, press a button, the code is uploaded. And another one, press a button, code is uploaded. So it's a faster process, hassle-free process, and no need of external computer or anything. You just need this device to upload the same firmware in all other devices. A great, great tool. And I'm thinking of to, you know, reverse engineer this and try to make our own version of it. How awesome it will be, right? So let me know what kind of things we will need or uh, how, how we can upload the firmware file from one uh, controller up to another controller. Do you know the process or do you have any links to share with the, me down in the comments of the video and our team will definitely check it out. And let's make a DIY version as well. But anyways, as of now, this is the project coming up soon on Crowd Supply. So do check that out. Then we have a couple of new boards back to back teased by Lilico. So one of this, one of them is the T panel. I personally love the quality of the displays. That's just look at the quality. It is super sharp. Okay, I don't know the resolutions, but this is the T panel display based on ESP32 board. It's a touchscreen display, probably the capacitor touchscreen only. On the back, you can see this ESP chip, and this is also look like the ESP chip because of this logo. I'm not sure about it, but there are two different chipsets. And again, what is this black box all about? I'm really confused. I haven't seen this kind of thing before. So if you know what it is, well, let me know in the comments. I really don't know what this, what's that. Then we have micro SD card slot. Then we have two different type C port, maybe for two different ESP. I don't know. No specifications given as of now, but this is the new display teased by Lilico and soon it will be coming up on their website and AliExpress as well. I love the display by the way. Then next is this TPOE Pro probably made for industrial projects because this supports not only ESP32 Wi-Fi, but it has a LAN connector, LAN 8720, PoE power over Ethernet and RS-485, okay? So all this uh, communication protocols states that this is made for industrial ready things or industrial automation, okay? So again, a teaser, nothing uh, like no description, no specifications given. Only it is given here as it supports 30 volt input as well. So voltage ranges from 4.5 volt to 40 volt as an input voltage supply. Definitely looking forward to it. And uh, should we go on with the industrial automations as well using this kind of boards or this kind of uh, yeah, development kit? Well, what do you think? Should we go for industrial versions? <laughs> Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And uh, yeah, that's another teaser uploaded by Lilico. And one more post from Lilico and there are three devices teased back to back. So one of them is the TQT, which is a very tiny development board, probably based on ESP32 with a display on it as well. So this is uploaded by Lilico. Next, we have this T display, the new version like T display S3, which is again a display on board and on the back, probably we'll be having the ESP32 support. And we have the T keyboard S3, which I think there are a couple of you know, TQT installed on the keyboard acting as a key. Okay, so these are the TQT which I've shown and this is the keyboard. So I think those, those are the small devices that display on it. But yeah, this is the T keyboard S3. Again, just a teaser, no details as of now. So yeah, those were a couple of new updates like new projects, new boards, new contest alert. Uh, happened in the span of the month September 2023. So how was this video according to you? Was there any update in this video which you are not at all aware about it before watching this video? Well, if is it so, do press the like button because you learned something new after watching this video. And also share this video with all your friends who you think should be staying updated with all these things happening in the makers, in the IoT, in the electronics industries. And yeah, that being said, I am just ending this video here and now just Wait for my next video. Until then, explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.